Good morning, Pleasant View. Boy, once again, I'm so thankful to be able to be here today and to be able to speak to you through the ministry of this YouTube and, of course, then those that's with us in Zoom as well. Uh, boy, I just can't say enough to our church and uh, your faithfulness and then you faithful viewers as well. Those that's been with us for a long time, those that's just joining us, all those that's even around the world, I hear. And I'm so thankful for each and every one. But for our mission churches here at Pleasant View, that but we've been able to preach the gospel. Individuals receive that special gospel of the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And has presented that same message of Jesus and his great victories for all of us there in communities far and wide. And I'm so thankful for our missions church back east and Brother Butch Fast, I mentioned from week to week, Brother Larry, and of course by our believers in Mexico, which there are so many in different regions and areas, and there's a whole group there in Puerto Penasco. Uh, and I'd like to also say, boy, I'm thankful God for one of our oldest ministries, Pleasant View Christian Elementary. And when I say old, it's not old in age. It's just been here for a good long time. But it's done a marvelous work and the depth of that work of the love and educating young men and women. Brother Roger that's behind it, I can't commend you enough to pray for him because, boy, he has done a marvelous job and boy, through this difficult time of the pandemic. But love to you all, and I guarantee you this is meant from not just me, but above all from God himself who has loved you and chosen you in that marvelous person, the Lord Jesus Christ, who has loved you and laid down his life for you. And of course, then the Holy Spirit, the very essence of God's love. The whole God is Holy Spirit and God is love, the scripture says. And the total unconditional unmerited love of God that is beyond our even our capabilities or imagination. Again, to pleasant of you, I commend you, and I commend you all, and I know I say this week in and week out, uh, but I just pray that you take it to heart, not a, as a piece of repetition, but how deeply I mean it. I am so thankful for you, for you've not only kept the ministry alive, but you and keeping God so real in your life and keeping him real in the lives of others by your tremendous works of texting and loving and communicating with one another. Uh, I just uh, can't uh, say enough about it. And kind of in, like, uh, uh, in light of our message today and kind of the entitlement of our message, <clears throat> it is all for the most part, for the most part. And I'll explain that more here in a moment. But old church, I say this to you as I commend you so much. And you probably don't even know how real it really is, how much hope you have inspired and uh, through a very difficult time. You not only enabled to keep the faith, but you caused others to keep that faith and you kept that faith growing all the way through this time of being absent from a general assembly, speaking just in prayers and to, in love to one another, texting your calls, uh, the Zoom ministry and those that participated and been able to show their faces and put a big old smile out there. The faithfulness in tithes and offerings has been overwhelming. Uh, and, you know, I knew you believed, but I never realized how much you believed and really believed. Without encouragement or threat or warning, you have tithed and kept it up all the way through. And I love you so much, but more than that, God loves you and his promised blessings as I'm assured for each and every one of you. And boy, your great love, not only for the brethren and one another, which has been so deep and evident, but also your love for visitors and others that you've invited to come and join us here on YouTube. And I think we all could have done a lot more and could do a lot more, but for the most part, again, uh, we've done just pretty doggone good. Anyway, folks, I can't help you. I'm as hillbilly as they come born and raised out of the southern hills of Missouri, but I just say this, I can't help but love you. and so proud of you and so thankful for you and you have been a participant and a part of the ministry that God has called me into years ago. And then uh, I assure you, and I want you to know this and, update, and keep it deep in your own heart, I promise you both biblically 
and by the very Holy Spirit of God himself that all of your rewards is awaiting you. And that honestly, even in this life, you're going to get to experience many of God's blessings and awards that you haven't even begun to experience yet. I know that's coming. We're going to experience that as a church when we reassemble and we start seeing others born again, saved, and baptized into our body. Well, let's come back believing, church. Well, believing in the power of the resurrection. Yes, and those rewards I'm speaking of that God has for you, not only in this life, but in the life to come. And I assure you, your grand crown, as the Apostle Paul makes reference to, the, the crown of the Lord Jesus awaits you, and you will receive your crown, just as Brother Paul was assured that he would receive his. The crown of glory awaits you, Pleasant View. And again, boy, you faithful, wonderful believers, and how I can't dem demonstrate uh, my love for you. I am sometimes when I'm thinking about you and boy, just overwhelmed and well up with the joys. Oftentimes I don't know if it's even old Satan or just maybe it's just good for my own heart. But I reflect on those that's fallen away, those that turn back in their unbelief. I remember many walking away in bitterness when there was nothing here but love and joy and the understanding of total salvation in the person Jesus Christ. And yet they went their way, their way. And it sure ain't the Lord's way. The Lord's way is come to Jesus, stay in Jesus, and you keep in Jesus, and he'll take you all the way to heaven and God's glory. Anyway, church, I can exhort you just simply this. Boy, keep it up. Keep up the good work. And as your pastor, I, I'm just privileged to say, keep it up. Boy, church, you're a testimony to this world. And Brother Roger will insist on you too to keep it up. Uh, you're blessed with a couple of pastors, one just about old and wore out, I guess, but you have another one that's just right there and probably one behind him that's coming up real soon. God has blessed Pleasant View with his words and those of the, his spirit that's called to preach those words. And today I just give thanks also for our elders and our elder body. And uh, they're going to be coming together today following this broadcast that is if we get these broadcasts in the correct order not like we did over uh, over easter and the resurrection but either way it'll still all work out but following this broadcast the elders will be coming together where we'll be planning our startup dates and uh, and in that also uh giving uh, the very commission to put together a committee that will uh, will prepare us for that startup and that startup date uh, they'll lay out a format that will first involve our safety and meeting all the medical and health officials requirements and then past that uh, they will go on about uh, by the organizational side preaching service how it should be done da 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 and as well as our Sunday schools where children who many will probably not vaccinated by our time of our startup uh, will be but we'll be in the safest mode that we can possibly be now, something I need from our body is you to be faithful, and if unless there's a medical reason, a real urgent medical reason for you not to receive the vaccination, uh, unless that's the case, please go get that shot. Get those old shots done. Get that behind you. It's not that bad. I know there's those that spread rumors and, oh, my goodness, all those conspiracy theories. My goodness, we are blessed with one of the most compassionate, loving medical group of people I've ever seen, the greatest of science and scientists uh, here in our country. And I don't know why we can't have the confidence to believe and uh, to really understand that these people really do care about other people. That's why they're in those positions. They really care, and God has used them greatly. And they have so provided that God has through them uh, boy, this vaccine and vaccination, and so, boy, let's get it done. Uh, just get it done. Uh, some might look at me and say, see, you had a bad side effect. You're a honry old booger. Well, I may be honry old booger, but I was that already long ago. It wasn't nothing to do with the vaccine, I assure you. I encourage you all, though, boy, please get those shots. And when people's talking about us reassembling, just encourage them to do so. And the reason is that we need to be at least a 70 to 80% of our actual membership. 
uh, all vaccinated before we assemble. Now, these are facts. These are medical facts. They're not mine. But we need that much to assure herd immunity. That would give us the opportunities to allow some, and there is some, that medically cannot have those shots. It's too risky because they have other medical issues. And it's really real. And uh, anyway, but for them to be able to attend and participate, but we need to get those percentages down, and we're working right along toward that. Anyway, I love you this morning. God has loved us, and he is busy loving us and loving us as we love one another. Loving this old lost world, and I just commend you, Pleasant View, the way you have loved it and preached the gospel to it, even when it's at times hostile toward you. Even when you've been just beat up and discouraged and didn't think you had another ounce to go that you could ever bring the gospel to anybody else. Well, today I want to bring us back to a kind of an older subject about warning. And it's about warning those that doesn't come to Christ in their lifetime. About those who can be null and grow dull and, and dim toward the Lord. Or we can call it lukewarm, if you remember messages about that. Uh, grow cold or indifferent. And then all of a sudden, boy, they fail at doing what God says. And as a result, boy, they have little or no love at all. And if they ain't careful, they'll end up under the judgment of God and lost and perished if they're not so careful. Ezekiel, a favorite text of mine, uh, chapter 33, verses 3 through 9. And also verses uh, uh, out of chapter 33 again, verses 30 through 33. You feel free to read the whole thing, but it is a lot of just almost repeat, and it gets the points all in there and across. In verse 3 of the Holy Spirit speaking through the bold prophet Ezekiel, he says, when he sees the sword coming upon the land, this watchman, this is the pastor, and then in his case, the prophet, he, this watchman, he blows the trumpet and warns the people that judgment is at hand. Then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning, and if the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be on his own head. He heard... Uh, he heard the sound of the trumpet, but did not take warning. His blood shall be upon himself. But he who takes warning shall save his life. But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet, and the people are not warned, and the sword comes and takes any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood I will require at the watchman's hands. So you, uh, O son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore you shall hear a word from my mouth and warn them for me. When I say to the wicked, O wicked man, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to the, him or warn this w wicked man, from his way that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require on your head and hand. And nevertheless, if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, uh, in his iniquity but you have delivered your soul just by the simple fact you brought the warning to him. You told him exactly what was going to take place. Therefore, you, O son of man, say to the house of Israel, Thus you say, if our transgressions and our sins lie upon us, and we pine away, pine away in them, how can we then live? Uh, say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, and, but that the wicked turn from his way, live, turn, turn from your evil ways, for why shall you die, O house of Israel? And then picking it up, and you can just read on all the way through, but picking it up down at verse 30 for the sake of our text this morning. It says, As far as you, son of man, the children of your people are talking about you beside the walls. 
They're speaking of in the doors of their houses, behind the doors in their houses. So they're speaking of him in their homes, in their houses. And they speak to one another, all virtuous things, everyone saying to his brother, please come. Oh, what, what better thing could be happen? Come and hear what the word, what God's word that comes to us through the Lord, from the Lord. So they came to you as a people. He's telling this to Ezekiel the pastor, you could say. And they came to you as a people do. They sit before you as my people. And you know, we're getting ready to return, O church. And we're going to be coming together again in assembly. And we're going to be all seating right here in this very auditorium. And you'll be seated before me as I will continue to preach and bring God's words to you, God willing. And, as my, and you will be there as my people, as a people do. And, and so they came to you as a people do. They sent before you, uh, and with their mouth they show much love. And boy, we sure want to do that too. And he's not saying that there's something wrong with the mouth showing much love. You're going to use your mouth, but make it loving. That's for sure. But their hearts pursue their own gain. Indeed, you are to them as a very lovely song of, who, of one who has a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear your words, but the problem is they don't do your words. They don't obey your words. They don't do them. And when this comes to pass, and when this judgment, this judgment comes to pass, and they have been warned, and it will come, it will come, then they will know that a real prophet has been among them. And the way you know a real prophet, just to say it now and up front, is that their prophecies will come true. And when it comes true, as he says, then you'll know a prophet of God, one of a proclaimer that God called and equipped and put in charge over the people. He was real and true and a real prophet among you. And that's the honest truth. Oh, church, yes, today the Holy Spirit, out of a heart of love for all of us and for his body, God speaks to the church of Pleasant View and for you that's viewing with us, and you who have come to the like faith in the person, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are in the midst as God's working in us, in our hearts and minds right now, for our return. And in this, that we are prepared. And that all of us really understand we all have this responsibility to warn. Now, it wasn't long ago that we pro spoke of how we as a church must preach the gospel, and we're pretty good on that. Uh, I'm amazed at how much people will tell others about Jesus' perfect life lived for them, his death on that old cross that put to death sin and put to death everything that was wrong with an individual, that they could just call on the name of Jesus, and what he did will save them. For he buried their sins in the abyss of hell and buried them there. And he purged himself once and for all, being so clean and perfect that God out of holiness could do no other but raise him from the dead. And you're able to preach that. And you're able to tell someone, you know, if it's just real to you, that you have died with Jesus as he died for you, if it's real to you that he died for you, and you've died with him, that you are now raised all the way from sin and all the death and all the separation into the very presence and essence of God himself in the person Jesus Christ right now here in this body called the church, the Lord's physical body here on the earth that he continues doing his work of reaching and saving those that are lost and bringing warning to all men. Yes, old church, God is preparing us for his return. And he's preparing us to return in such manner. And remember, as we've spoken, that we are to warn those and not to omit 
boy, not to allow boy, his gospel message, his word to be omitted or neglected uh, and, and or rejected. No, sir, that's death. That's all that merits. Yes, warnings is a good thing, church. It's good to be warned. You know, I, you know, just practically thinking about it naturally, you know, God has loved us so much, he gave us warnings. And uh, warnings, again, is such a positive thing. You see, uh, that's what he called pa prophets and pastors to do. That's exactly right. That's really true. We have to warn you. And matter of fact, if we don't, if we don't warn you of the consequences and circumstances and give you the direction that you need and then to caution you all the time not to go the wrong direction or a direction that's anywhere away from Jesus. If anybody gives you that, you know that's a wrong way to go. Anyway, my friend, yeah, God sent and called and raised up prophets and pastors to do this one work, to warn. That's how much God loves us. He warns us. If you think about it just practical in life for a moment, you know, you're driving the car, it's nice to see one of those warning signs, caution signs off to the side that says a curve's up ahead, right or left. And it's an awful good thing in driving a car again, if you don't mind, if there's a dead end sign. Man, you don't want to drive off a dead end and kill yourself. You see, warnings is a good thing. And there's other warnings like no trespassing. And I even seen one in my lifetime. Matter of fact, my dad was the one that spray painted it and made it on a piece of tin. It said, Warner, warning, trespassers shot on sight. <laughs> now, that seems harsh, but he done that out of losing some steers to some people that had butchered them and uh, stole the meat uh, and obviously probably uh, sold it in town somewhere or done something of that sort. And anyway, the warning was there. Nobody got shot and hopefully they followed the warning. And, uh, but uh, anyway, uh, it's a good thing to always be warned. You know, also, we don't think of little things like littering. You know, there was a lot long ago, everybody just oftentimes threw the trash out the window of a car. Now you can get a fine, and it's a pretty steep fine. And so there's signs that's up that says, warning, uh, do not litter. You can be fined for that. You see, the natural consequences of things, it's nice to be warned of. And the spiritual things, it's awful nice to be warned in those things too. It is a good thing to the soul to hear God's warnings, to hear and follow them and respond to them. You see, warnings is, is good for us. Warnings, uh, but you, you can't help but go wrong if you've got the warnings. Uh, you'll always do what's good. Uh, however, you got to remember, a warning is only as good as it's used. And if you neglect them or omit them or reject them and don't receive them as, a, as reality and be warned by them and do what he says or not do what he says, then in fact, you too can miss out on eternal life. You see, there's a grave warning about neglecting Jesus, omitting him, rejecting him. You see, the truth is, you'll perish in a devil's hell. There's only one that's been provided by God to be the cure for everything that ails man. And that one is Jesus Christ. There's just only one of him. I'm sorry, my religious is very near. I was accused of one time. And I'm just a believer in Jesus. And no, I don't uh, believe in all the others, no matter how good intentions they might have. Uh, the honest truth is, uh, yeah, and uh, you know, they're all talking about heaven and glory and that's just getting there, uh, you know, or things like that, or being back with God, and that we're all basically working for the same thing. No, God did a work. That's what they miss. God did a work, but his work was totally and solely done in one person. It was Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, that God gave to this world while we were all in our sin and death, that anyone that will just believe in what he did and his works, they will be saved by those works of Jesus, not their own. And it's only by faith in that person, Jesus, 
can a man be saved? And the man that hears that message is warned not to neglect, not to reject that message, and not to omit it from him, but to flee to Christ and call on his name and believe in him and his marvelous work of salvation. Yes, warning can save your soul if you listen to them and you follow them and do them. That's the only way warnings work. Warnings are given. And the warnings that are given can save others. You can be so productive in the life of others if you bring warnings to them. That's one thing God wants. God wants with all his heart is everybody to be warned. That's an amazing thing. He wants even the most wicked warned that they might turn from their wickedness and turn back to him and believe in him. You see, God wants everybody warned out of love and hope and deliverance. That's all God wants for them is to love them and for the hope of their own salvation and their own deliverance from what they're already living in. From the judgment that will be executed that's already pronounced. It's just a matter of time and that judgment will fall and the wrath of God will come down. Oh church, I just can't tell you, you know, how much I love you and what a role we have in warning by our lost relatives our family members and when we really see uh, boy that man, there are those too that is really against us they are called enemies uh, they come and they oftentimes uh, oppose us in many manners there are devils and devil spirits that and dwells in individuals and they always work contrary to the very purpose and love of God it's these we're told to flee from and warn that if we resist the devil, he will have to flee from us. You flee from such things uh, that would wound you, hurt you, or bind or blind your faith in the Lord Jesus. You see, God calls pastors to warn and cry warnings, to warn, and if you don't listen, you don't heed the warning, you'll perish. And then your own blood will be required upon your own head if you've been warned. I want to make sure I've warned everybody. When you tell the gospel to someone else, warn them. Warn them because if they walk away from it and you didn't warn them about not believing it, not receiving it, not making it theirs, then you fail to warn them, their blood will be required upon your head. So my friend, I just pray that we hear God's warnings. God warns pastors and elders as well. Yes, he does. Boy, he tells us to maintain the unity of the body at all costs. And if we don't listen, then the, those that gets perished in, while, and in disunity, their blood will be required upon our hands if we did not warn them. Uh, and so and it, the blood will be not held on them but the blood will be held on us. And something you need to remember, old church members, you know, if you're worrying about the pastor, did he do this right or did he do this wrong? Well, you know, I'm counting on Jesus to be my right, and I, everything I've done, I probably did it all wrong. But the one thing I have not done is believe and trust in the Lord and depend on him. And I guarantee you, if I'm at error, God will take care of me and you just don't worry about it, and he'll never put you that blood or anything that happens like that up upon you. If it's my error, I will be the one that'll stand to count for it. And remember that about your pastors, because there'll be others you'll be following besides me one day, real soon. You see, God wants this old, even the wicked warned. Oh, and it shows how much he loves them. And, you know, we need to understand wickedness is not, you know, kind of what we often think. It's the worst thing in the world, da, da, da. Well, it is, but it's really not. See, a person can be very wicked, and they might appear to be just very loving, sweet, wonderful, uh, charismatic. You can say all kinds of things. But a wicked person is one that has not a real relationship with Jesus Christ. They don't have the real love of God, the real love of the Holy Spirit indwelling them. They are left without mercy, meaning that they for themselves 
They don't know that God's not giving them what they deserve. They're probably thinking they're earning their, their way right along. They don't understand that God's loved them without their merits or without a condition from them. God just loved them because he chose to do so. See, they're without grace. They're without mercy. And God wants them warned. And he does not take pleasure in the destruction of even the most wicked. Now, a wicked person, according to scripture and definition, is one that who is really controlled by what we call the flesh, which is nothing more than the old beast of me, my, and I. And he is filled with such things as bitterness because he believes he's God and things is going to needs to go his way and he's right about it all. And the truth is, nothing ever goes their way. Nothing ever goes anybody's way. It's going to go the way God wants everything. And, you know, God's smarter than us. And there's some things he wants that ain't going to be the way I think he ought to want. And, uh, and I know uh, it'll be all right. I just want him to get his work done. But there are those that's bitter because they don't get their way in life. There are those that's jealous and envious of others. There are those that's filled with the lust of the flesh and the desire for themselves. They are filled with covetousness and want and desire of everything that you might have. Yes, uh, there are those that are filled with murder and lie and deceit. And deceit is the worst lie of all. It's not really saying a lie, but you deceive and make a person believe something is real or true that's really not that way at all but you make it seem to be that way. You see, it is these and that nature that's behind this that makes you wicked. And a wicked one brings harm to the souls of others. They bring hurt in the lives of others. They bring pain and discomfort in the lives of others, to other souls. And they, they provoke God's own wrath. And boy, it moves him. To man, to honestly, as he says, my wrath is kindled. To be kindled, it inflames him, and he gets madder and madder and madder. And you leave that just like that. If they're not warned, boy, all that wrath's going to come down. But what's going to be tragic if we fail to warn them? Their blood will be required upon our account. And boy, we don't want that. God wants them warned and makes us and joins with us the responsibility to warn them not to, to turn to him. And this is what, uh, for the wicked, they need to hear. You may be wicked as you can be, and you're going down that old road of w w w wickedness. But the Lord says, hey, you just stop right there, return to me, and I will return to you. And I will blot out, forgive, let go, all of your wickedness. Man, all you got to do is just turn back to God, to love him, to give him your heart. Let him enter in. Uh, he does not love that destruction of your soul. He wants it saved. Boy, if that ain't amazing, I don't know what is. Oh, church, we're being prepared for a return, oh, church. And when we return, and it won't be long, <laughs> kind of the entitlement of my message has been running along, but uh, honestly, I would call it for the most part. <clears> that may bother some, but for the most part, you can see that we who are saved and we as a pastor, I have a job to warn you as the church and the body of Christ on earth and to warn you to be sure to warn those that are yet lost. To warn those that when we've shared them the marvelous gospel of Jesus Christ and his perfect life, death, burial, and his resurrection and the ascension that has come and his return whereby he'll receive all of us and glorify us and take us into his glory forever and ever. If we don't warn those to, boy, to receive him and to receive the redemption God's given them, that their blood will be required upon our hands. So, boy, uh, I sat down myself and had done a little assessment, you know. The Lord Jesus did this from time to time, and you might call it, it's kind of an evaluation. You kind of look at things and think about how well we're doing. 
I, as a pastor of a church and, and given responsibilities, as you surely see here by our text alone, that I share in. And I take that responsibility very, very seriously. Man, you can fool anybody, but you can't fool the Lord. And it's personal and intimate with Him. And this, I know, is that simply, you know, I can't say I wish we were 100% at everything. We're not. But for the most part, we can say this. Yes, that's the honest truth. You see, the truth is, you know, boy, we've been saved, but we don't sometimes act very saved or look very saved. You see, we still are in a flesh that's cursed and still separated from God. Yes, we're in a world that's accursed and separated from God. And in our lives, there's all kinds of things warring against that spirit that has been born again in us. Yes, so the best we can ever come up with, because we're not like God. We're not 100%. So the best part we can have is, is uh, the, the, for the most part. For the most part. And in all honesty, that's exactly the way it'll be. You know, for the most part, we believe pretty good. You know, for the most part, we've loved the Lord and loved one another, and we're getting better at it every day. There is things you do progress and get better. But it's doing it in the first place. And for the most part, oh, pleasant view, I'm so glad to say you've done that quite well. And like I say, I wish we all was 100%. But it's only God that's 100%. He is holy. He is perfect. He is totally complete without spot or blemish. We're not that, you see. We're still flawed. Now, don't lose hope. There's a day coming by keeping the faith and faith in Jesus that when Jesus returns, we'll be gathered together and all those that's already even passed and that's there in the balconies of heaven cheering us on Jesus is going to bring them all with him. And when we all get together, as in a whole good old Baptist hymn, when we all get together, when we all get together in a moment of a twinkling of an eye, we will all be glorified. And that and then only are we 100%. So church between now and our walk, and it's kind of a wobbly walk of faith and anything we can do to make it stronger, better, and straighter, well, how we should do that to enable us to warn others even better uh, and better. You see, but until then, let's stay with the most part. You see, church, for the most part, I would say, uh, you have known of your own sins, your shortness to the glory of God. Now, you may not think that's important or big. Oh, my friend, until you become a sinner, you can never be saved. Till you understand the gravity of your sin, you'll never have an appreciation to the greatness of God's grace and mercy. You see, you'd never know the love and forgiveness that God had unless you understand the magnitude of your own sin to some degree. And again, it's, you know, for the most part. You know, for the most part, you did hear, though, and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And I'm thinking about a whole bunch of you that I've seen boil out of those pews, and I stepped down and to give an invitation, and you come forward confessing that Jesus and that was given to you in that message had become real in your heart, and that your burden of sin has rolled away, that you have believed in the Lord Jesus. Oh, yes, for the most part. We've believed, old church. You have believed. And for the most part, we've been able to walk in, a, in His Spirit. Oh, what a place to walk. In the reality of God. In the reality of an unconditional, unmerited love that's just mixed and immersed in His mercy of never giving us what we justly deserve. Oh, for the most part, church, we have carried the cross of Christ daily. We brought it to others while we reckoned our own sin is dead. We insisted on others to come to that old cross and experience their sins being crucified and put to death. Well, we've, you know, for the most part, we've done a pretty good job here. And I just say this, we stand ready. Yes, for the most part, most of our bodies stand ready. We're not been loafing. We may have rested a little bit, but we're not loafing. No, sir, we, we understand through this pandemic, God just give us a little time. Now we're all rested up and ready to go, and we all stand for the most part ready to get right back in his service. 
and do anything we can for the most part. You have Jesus uh, by saving us, and it's Jesus plus nothing. We have our doctrine down. We really know that in our flesh dwelleth no good thing, but in the person of Jesus all good things dwell. And so we know that we're saved by Jesus plus nothing and minus nothing. And that's exactly what we got to tell everyone else. Yes, for the most part, we know the results of our salvation. It is not a bunch of nothingness. Man, we're going to heaven. We're moving right to the very glory of God. We're going to be made joint heirs with Christ. We're going to be made sons of God. We're just, every day goes by, we're just closer to the fulfillment of all that. You see, there's a lot to be warned about. We got a lot of good things to look forward to. Oh, Church of Pleasant View. Yes, for the most part. But we've been through the waters of baptism and we insist on others to come to him the same way. Nobody gets into the kingdom of God sneaking in. No, sir, you don't come as a thief and try to find some other way. You come right through the Jesus Christ and his life, death, burial, and resurrection. Yes, sir, church, for the most part, we insist on others to do that. And for the most part, uh, boy, we've held great with things like our tithing and not robbing God and not denying God's provisions that, boy, not only your pastors and elders and others can be able to move with decisions that will benefit and further the gospel, but that we've been able to, boy, hold to and have loved, boy, our Lord and showed our worship to him, honored him in all things, during all things, even in, during a pandemic when hours were cut back and some wasn't working much. Uh, those type of things. Oh my goodness, well for the most part, church you've done so well. Boy, you, we have thrived, our school has moved forward, children has been educated during this time. Others has heard messages and has confessed Christ to be saved. And boy, I'm looking forward to follow through in baptism. Yes, church, for the most part. Uh, I do believe that Pleasant View stands not guilty of, for the most part, of most people's blood, but have proclaimed the gospel of Jesus Christ clearly and have brought warning. Now, I shared my own confession. I was concerned in my own pastoralship that maybe I haven't warned those about the wrath of God that I, in particular, that was about to come and fall if they didn't receive Jesus. That it's coming and it will come upon each and every one that fails to receive Jesus. And I'm concerned about their blood being required on my head. And then you as a church not equipping you to warn others. Not enough just to give them the gospel, but warn them if they reject, omit, or neglected from receiving the very message of Jesus Christ. You see, the truth is God wants people warned, church. Oh, please of you. And it's these things uh, that, <coughs> that God... <coughs> pardon me, that God wants us to do. And boy, church, let's give it everything we got, which will end up being for the most part. And uh, I hope you really understand that uh, boy, I refer to our frailty and uh, by our oftentimes our own weaknesses that's involving with the flesh to everything else that we contend with in this old world. But in spite of it all, God's faith and grace and his spirit is greater and he's done a marvelous work through us, I think, and therefore, for the most part. For the most part, these are the things that we really do want to do. And in our return, as we come back together, and this is the point, the whole message, as we come back to get, to get together in the first place, that you see what is let known through to Ezekiel by God himself it's kind of the hearts of the people, and this could be a case even for us, Pleasant View. So, well, let's stand warned and prepare to warn others if it turns out to be. But the truth is, these are wonderful things that, that is actually said. First, he says, they're all talking about me, talking about the preacher. Uh, boy, and, and, you know, and, and they're saying wonderful things. Now, folks, now I'm just telling you, that's a good thing to do. You may not think anything of me or think anything positive about me. You might even think and think you know a lot of bad things about me. 
If you could only wave the God's goodness and salvation to my bad things and understand his forgiveness was far greater than my bad things as it was for you, you'd understand that I still come out smelling like a rose in every case. And so will you that believe in what Jesus has done. Yes, you talk about me in a positive light. And no, that should be. Who would want to hear about somebody that he's talked ugly about and spoken evil against uh, all the time? Uh, don't get me wrong, as a shepherd, a pastor, you'll always have those, and sometimes they rise up right in your midst. Sometimes, they, matter of fact, Paul warns even through the elders, an elder body that can be those that are uh, lying in there, that that old spirit will rise up in, and here they come speaking all manners of evil. Well, no, they didn't speak manners of evil here. This is a good thing. They spoke good things of their pastor, and I hope you speak good things of me, that it would encourage others to believe that message that I get to preach to them, that they'll come and be saved. And, you know, for those that discourage, oh, anybody that was discouraged or stumbled or fall, their blood will be required on their heads. But, oh, church, just come on. Uh, and uh, do these things. You see, they went out and they spoke to one another. Boy, pleasure of you, I hope we come back speaking to one another and come back speaking, uh, boy, to his brother and come back, boy, to church assembled and prepared for people and to reach people as people do. And then we're to come, and as we do come together for the assembly, we'll all set together, and you'll set before me, according to Scripture here, uh, as a people do. And literally, as you set before me, as I'm the shepherd up there preaching, you're setting before the Lord, and they will hear, they will hear your words. They will hear God's words with that. And with their mouth, again, they will show much love and boy there's nothing wrong again with showing much love with your old mouth man anything that's loving coming out of there is a marvelous thing oftentimes what ends up coming out is a bunch of old wickedness that's down here in our old heart ugliness and things like that and boy if i could speak you know guys we need to speak kindly around our children we need to use you know better words and not using them old ugly worldly words that's thrown all over the televisions and and uh, everything else that they're exposed to. They need to hear things that with kindness and gentleness all over it, things that would include God in all of them, loving and faith-building things. Yeah, God says, uh, uh, I am, <clears throat> I'm sorry, uh, oh, God, God says that the people say about me that, man, my voice is very lovely. Now, they might want to take issue with that, because my voice probably is not very lovely. But I have had a lot of people tell me that the words that I was speaking was the most beautiful and the most loving words they ever heard because they were words about God and about Jesus and the grandeur of his salvation. Yes, God says, oh, they love uh, to listen. And boy, if we don't listen, we don't have a hope at anything. So these are the things that we are to do. And they say with voices, it's pleasant, like music, like a music instrument. And they say that that's what I can sound like because they're hearing God's words. And it can be so beautiful to ever one. And well, it should be. Yes, it should be. But this is what God doesn't want Pleasant View to return and do. No, sir, not one bit. And for the most part, well, let's make sure it doesn't. We... Uh, we are to assemble hearing God's words and, and doing them. And boy, the tragedy is not to do them. Hear God's, to assemble, hear God's word and not do them. Fail to, ju to warn the, of others of the, of the swift judgment that's about to come upon them, of the severe consequences that's about to take place on the lost and the wicked of the world. Oh, no, sir. You see, what they did, they oftentimes spoke and did all the right things, but they did it all with their mouth. And they had love and spoke of love with their mouth, but they did not do the loving thing. They didn't warn others. They didn't reach for others. They come back all about themselves. 
You see, saying nice things is a, is a good thing to do, no, no doubt. Saying nice things about the pastors, I said. But the honest truth is, well, what we need is to hear God and hearing his words. And boy, the truth is, oftentimes, there are those that just haven't received Jesus, not, uh, not really come to him and really love him and receive him with his mercy and his grace. The truth is, uh, boy, they need to be warned of the tragedy of their judgment that will be upon him. Uh, not forsaking and drawing back. Uh, boy, not forsaking the assembly. Boy, we come to their back. Boy, it'll be pretty easy to think, oh my goodness, by the next Sunday, well, it was nice seeing everybody. I'm going to be take off another year or so uh, as we did through the pandemic. No, sir. Boy, don't draw back. No lessening. Oh, boy, God says, boy, you bring the sword with everything in your whole mind. Uh, boy, not to find yourself lukewarm and spewed out of his mouth. No, sir, church, uh, not to be God robbers. And the worst thing about robbing him in tithes and offerings, and I pray some repent of this, and boy, get back to it. I know it's maybe difficult because you didn't know how to get it here, what to do, but oh, surely, uh, boy, return to him in this on this issue. Come back being a worshiper of him, honoring him, loving him, and prospering others with your gifts of love, that others can be saved far and wide. And then above all, the basic things, to love, to love as God has loved you. Boy, that's you're commanded to do so. As Christ has loved you, love one another. Oh, you are warned, I tell you, plus of you, if you fail at this. Every person that left here, there's two things that they forgot to do. Maybe they did it somewhat for years in, in a row. And then all of a sudden one day, a rebellion took place in their own heart. But they started somewhere not loving somebody. There's somebody, then the second thing they wouldn't do is forgive. Everybody that's fell away, turned back in unbelief, those type of things, these are the two things that killed their soul dead. They just refused to do God's forgiveness. They claimed it at one time for themselves, that God has really forgave them and let go of all their wrongs. They claimed it at one time for themselves that God blotted out all of their sins. They claimed it for themselves and that, that God wouldn't remember their sins. And they really liked that. You see, they really liked that a lot. But when it come down to living that towards someone else, they refused to. They rebelled. They rejected. And as a result, they're no longer a part of Pleasant View. They all drifted away. You see, the truth is, old church, well, let us return to the Lord and let us be warned. Well, let us understand, well, today is a warning that we come back together, we forgive and, and we are coming back forgiving everyone else. It has already done. We're coming back, uh, boy, loving and loving one another. We're coming back with eyes as God's is, filled with mercy for everyone. We don't want anybody to get what they justly deserve. We want them to all be able to experience God's love and, boy, what he's provided in Jesus Christ for all their crimes. Yes, and forgiveness, but that it's not remembered. You don't keep talking about something that somebody did or somebody done wrong. And you don't remember it no more. You put it out of mind, heart, and thought. That's what God does for all of us. Yes, sir. And be warned if you don't. Let us be found faithful in the ordinances. All of God's that, boy, he has given us. Not just tithes and offerings, but, boy, in our Lord's Supper that I'm looking so forward to when we get back together to do that again. And what you'll find in the end of the ends, oh my goodness, I'm out of time, up and down. What you're going to find, my dear friends of Old Pleasant View, that as uh, it will come to pass, and this will come to pass even for me, and I rejoice at this thought, that, uh, boy, there will be a day that will come, and his wrath will come. And I'm so saddened for those who have missed the day of grace. Because, you know, boy, they were given the gospel. They were told, they were warned. For those that was members of our own church here, those that had been here and turned their backs and walked away, who went off doing their own thing. They're going to do my way. 
they, they went off and they said, spoke of everything evil toward others and that's what they do. Oh, my friend, we don't need such a thing, but you need to be warned because God will come in a judgment when he does come and then the day of grace is done gone and lost forever. You see, his judgment of wrath, they will know it. It'll come to pass. And then you'll find out something that was true the whole time. Yes, sir, this old boy right here, my name Roger Bradford, and I got a son named Roger Bradford, and he'll find it true too. That when it's all said and done and the judgment comes down and they all experience what we've warned, I guarantee you they'll know then a prophet was in their midst the whole time. A prophet of God that was called of God, gifted of God, and was commissioned by God himself. Then they will know when the wrath has come upon them that they had a prophet among them. And you know what certifies what a prophet is? When his prophecy has come to truth. We'll wait on judgment day for that, but that is coming and you have been warned. Oh church, I love you and oh friend, if you're a viewer today and you haven't called on the name of the Lord Jesus, I can't encourage you enough to just turn to him right now call on him. Oh, bless of you. If your old heart, if anyone's out there and you felt like you've got an old heart of wickedness that's going away from the Lord and the body, you're not only not too excited about getting back here and you have very little love or concern for the brethren. Oh, I pray you return to the Lord. Boy, get, let him fill your old heart with his love and grace. Return today to him. And oh, friend, boy, if you out there and never called on him to be saved, that today you'll call on him. And then I'll see you when we are open, which will just be a short weeks away, I'm sure. But when we're open for your coming forward and confessing him and being baptized. But boy, call on his name right now today, and thy shall be saved. Oh, church, let us pray. Father, thank you for your love. And Lord, thank you for your warnings. Lord, may we follow these today. Lord, I love you. Thank you so much for the Church of Pleasant View and the grandeur of their service, Lord, that you have worked in their hearts. For it's truly you that works in us both to will and to do. And we just praise you, Lord. In all things, we praise you. Now, Lord, keep us safe. Bless our people. And help, let us prepare in that spirit of your love boy, for one another and re in this return. And Lord, let us understand, boy, your warnings are so real and so true. In Jesus' name we pray, for there is no other. Amen. God bless you.